the reason many people are not answered is because they focus on themselves before they focus on the kingdom of God. So in prayer, you must prioritize God. Then after you have prioritized God, you then pray about yourself. So when you are starting to pray, pray about the needs of God. Pray about the needs of the church. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. What a marvelous time. What a marvelous hour. May the Lord make his face shine upon your life. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord make your way prosperous. My name is Yamkela Joseph and this is Jesus Wayne's TV. And today I'm bringing you something that I think I will probably not be able to finish the message right now because of its context and the broadness of it. But just to give you a picture of where we are in the world today, what is the plan of God and what God is doing. Because many think all that is taking place right now in the world might be just an accident. It might be a coincident. But all of us know that to God there are no coincidences. To God there are no accidents. Everything that God does, it's according to time, it's according to schedule. And the Bible is clear that God spoke to Habakkuk and declared that I will stand upon my watch and he shall speak to me and he shall say, write the vision down and make it plain upon the tables. And he said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely not tarry, but it shall come to pass. Now God has greater plans for this world. And God has greater plans for the church. In Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans that I have for you are the plans to give you a great future and a great potential. Plans not to harm you, but to give you an expected end. So we are not by any means rejected and forsaken by God. God is still faithful, seated in the throne, executing his activities over the children of men. So I want you to know that whatever that is taking place right now in the world has not been a surprise. It is actually inspired by God. It is the time of God and a very exciting time for the church. According to Isaiah number 60, the Bible says, Arise and shine, your light has come, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It says, For surely darkness will fill the earth and deep darkness shall cover the people. By the light of the Lord will shine upon you, and the kings of the earth will come to the brightness of thy shining. Now, you have to understand that we are actually living at the time where we saw the earth being filled with darkness, where we saw deep darkness covering even the people. Then the Bible said that was the perfect, this is the perfect time where God is making a call that we should arise and we should shine so that we can begin to have the kings of the earth coming to our light. Let's read it from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah number 60. Arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines over you. For look, darkness will cover the earth and total darkness the peoples. But the Lord will shine over you and his glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the shining of your brightness. Raise your eyes and look around. They shall all gather and come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters will come to you. Now, this is the perfect time where we saw the earth filled with darkness. Everything seemed gloomy. As the people began to wail, people started crying. Unfortunately, that even the church was found wanting in this hour and in this time. But nevertheless, God has called this hour of darkness that it was the perfect time for his light to shine over his people. And that even the kings and the nations will begin to look at the church, which is the ecclesia the set apart kingdom of God that is established in the earth. They will look at the kingdom of God and at the church and find comfort, 
fulfilling exactly the words of Jesus. Jesus said, and ye are the light of the world. Ye are a city that is placed upon a hill that cannot be hidden. He said, shine therefore so that those that are in darkness will see thy good works and praise your Father that is in heaven. So this is not a time for the church to cover down. This was not a time for the church to even be afraid. But it was a time for the church to stand up and point the way. When the earth was full of darkness and is full of darkness, is the time for the people of God and those who are called by his name to rise up as the light of the world and to march over and show the people of the world that we have been the guiding force. We have been the one that have made this world to be what it is. We are a kingdom government, a kingdom system. The Bible says upon Jesus Christ, the government is upon his shoulders. So we must understand that we are not subject to principalities and powers because we are seated in heavenly places far above powers and principalities. So this is the message Christian is supposed to understand and know because we are not subject to these things of this world. Now I want to tell you that though we might be approaching the beginning of birthdays, but it is not over by a That's why all what you see from the youth media and what you see from these mainstream media, you should never allow it to be your voice. There are many voices that are speaking in the world, but you must listen to the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice. I call them by name and they follow me. He said, a voice of a stranger, they will be Who is a stranger? The voice of propaganda, the voice of all the kind of bad news that the world is false news. It's the voice of the enemy. The devil is not as 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 took over the mainstream media and has took over the media waves to begin to spread a message of fear, a message of intimidation, and a message that God is against. Hence, when you heard about this COVID-19, all they promoted was for you to be afraid. But I want to tell you, it is simply just the beginning. God is about to bring about the greatest time that the world has ever seen. And the greatest judgment to Satan, of course, but the best time to the children of God. A generation of Issachar, a time of great apostolic and prophetic understanding and knowledge. This is a time of the sons of God manifesting in glory, so that the earth may be restored and it, to its former nature. God is right now working on that. So that's why today I'm speaking to you on the message that I have titled, The Collusion of Times. The Collusion of Times. When the times of God are colliding with the times of man, of which this is what happened in the year of 2020. In 2020, we saw the time of God and the time of man reaching one place and they began to collide. And that's why we began to see what we were seeing. Now, what do I mean when, the, when I say that the time of God colluded with the time of man? It's because God has a plan and man has a plan. And man is not inspired by God. Man is inspired by the God of this world, which is Lucifer, the devil. So the devil used man's power that he took from Adam and he makes activities using mankind because he's illegal in the world so he makes these plans so that he can override the plan of god for this world but god in far advance and greater understanding because he's far ahead of time has already made the devil to become an agent 
in his plans. So every time the devil seeks to do something, at the end of the day, he ends up placing a stage for God to stand upon. That's how amazing God is. He has always allowed the devil to run first, yet doesn't know that as he is running first, he is simply working for the favor of God. That's why the Bible says, for everything works together for good to them that believe and who are called according to his purpose. You see, so most of the time, family, Satan is always an agent of God indirectly. Because when he tries to set a platform for himself, it ends up being God who stands upon that platform. He thought he was going to destroy the life of Job. He didn't know that he was emptying Job so that God can bless him even seven times than before. So every time Satan thinks he's winning, he's always losing, but he never learns a lesson. Hallelujah. So right now, last year, 2020, we began to see the time of God colliding with the time of man. God had a plan before time to make sure that he gives the church full authority, full rulership over the world. The Bible says Jesus told his disciples, the authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. And therefore I sent you, go unto all the world, make disciples and preach the gospel to all nations. Now, according to Jesus, the authority, the power was given to him and he transferred it to him, to, to, to the disciples. Meaning that the devil is now an illegal operator in this world. He carries no legal right because the keys were taken by Jesus. But nevertheless, he still operates. So Jesus now, when he transferred this authority that was stolen from the first Adam to the church, to God's people, it was then the mandate of God to restore the same domination, the same understanding of dominating the systems of the world and influencing the systems of the world for the kingdom of God. So meaning that the kingdom of God not only was it supposed to be established within the congregation? But the kingdom of God had to be established in the world. Hence the Bible says, Jesus told his disciples, one of the signs of the end times is this. He said, for this gospel of the kingdom will be preached unto all the nations and then the end will come. Not the gospel of anything, but the gospel of the kingdom. Now, when you are talking about the kingdom of God, you are talking about a system of rulership. You are talking about a system of authority. You are talking about a system of kingdom culture and influence. Then Jesus said, such kind of a gospel of kingdom culture, kingdom influence, kingdom rulership will be preached to the whole world. Then the end will come. Meaning the only time we are going to experience the end of the time, it is not when the World Health Organization or when the Economic World Forum decide that is the end of the world and they want to rule over us. It is not the end. No, it's not. The Bible said the only time the end is going to come, it is when the kingdom gospel has reached the whole world. Now, when Christians understand the kingdom gospel, we'll know that the kingdom gospel is not just about religion. It's not just about Christianity. But the kingdom gospel is about God taking rulership over the systems of the world. Meaning, when we're talking about the financial system, God has to take ownership of the financial system. God has to take ownership over the marine system, over the every kind of system that is in this world today. God must have influence over that. Then the e kingdom of God is then get to, to be established. 
So not only God. That's why in the book of Revelation. So for the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ Jesus. And one of the things that the devil showed Jesus when he took him to the mountain. The Bible says he showed him the kingdoms of this world and their splendor. Then he said if you shall bow to me I will give all of this to you. Then Jesus said no you shall only worship the Lord your God. So Jesus understood that he would not worship the devil to take over the world because he was still going to take over the world in the cross at the end of the day. So the devil was just trying to give him a shortcut of what God had already promised that he would take over when he reaches the cross. So at the end of the day it is the promise of God that the children of God must dwell in this world. Take over the world. Now, this promise had not been realized. Though the gospel had been preached all over the world in many places, but the gospel of the kingdom had not been understood. And the gospel of the kingdom had not reached all the nations of the world. Now, God's promise had already reached its fullness of time when the devil began to realize that the final authority and the final power to control the system of, of the world was going to be changed to the hands of the church and to God's people. Then immediately, the devil, when he saw this plan, because according to God, this plan can be called a great reset. But it is not a reset that the World, Health, the world Health Organization and the World Economic Forum are working for. This reset is a reset where God is changing when the Bible said the wealth of the sinner belongeth to the righteous. This is the reset where God is restoring the rightful ownership of the world to the right people, which are the children of God. So when the devil saw that God was trying to restore these kingdoms of the world to his church, which is the ecclesia, which is the power that restrains the Antichrist from manifesting in the world. So when the devil saw this, then what did the devil do? The devil went ahead to plan his own reset and targeted 2020 as the year where the devil will also make sure that he launches his own reset ahead of God so that God may not have his way. So the devil would then take over the world with these agents, even when he knew that it was not time. So Satan, using the World Health Organization, globalists, and all these organizations, Jesuits and the Freemasonries, they met together when they realized the time of God had come for the ecclesia to rise, for the church to rise. Then what did they do? They then discovered that God had placed 2020 as the year where this will begin. So they decided that they would do a pandemic in 2020 and shift the world finally to the charge of themselves which means the luciferian circle they will then take over and rule the world instead of the church so when they plan this thing they this they then put at these organizations in advance far ahead of time so they can counteract the plan of god for the church then when 2020 came, as God is planning to make sure that this year, 2020, the year 2020, is going to be a year of God's plan beginning to be unveiled and the church starting to march over to the 2021, to this year 2021, going forward. Then Satan said no. He cannot allow that to happen. He started colliding, confusing the nations of the world with the virus. Now, these systems were placed. They started fighting. Then there was a warfare in the realm of the spirit. Where the plan of God was being opposed by the princes of darkness. Exactly like what Daniel spoke about. When he said, when the angel said to him, from the first day you had prayed, God had already sent an answer. But the prince of Persia had blocked me and have been contended with him for 21 days. So these 
dark spirits and dark fallen angels when they began to see the angels of the living God bringing about the great reset of the kingdom of God that's about to take place which is the transfer of wealth from the world to the church when they began to see this they then came and began to fight the church of God but unfortunately some in the church that were not prepared some in the church they had not really understood the timing they were not aligned to the will of God they began to fall for the trap they began to give up they began to see a lot of things because they were not aligned with the kingdom of God and they were not aligned with the plan of God now God's plan cannot be changed God is always in he always has a remnant in every generation unfortunately for the devil again there was still a remnant there was still a remnant of God the people who understood times and seasons the children of Issachar the prophetic generation according to Joel 228 that in that hour I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh your young men and women who prophesy God had already sent them ahead that when God sent them ahead they understood the time and they understood and we were able to condemn you know we prayed and everybody prayed all over the world for the plan of God to prevail and indeed right now I want to tell you the plan of God is prevailing so what you're going to see right now we are shifting time we are entering now into what is called the alignment with the Hebrew calendar because all along we have been using paganic times we have been using the times that were used by the Roman Empire the Roman calendar we have been in the times that are set by the enemy operating under them but now God is shifting times and now you begin to see that a lot of things with this pandemic it has shifted a lot of things to start beginning at the month of March so the month of March now becomes almost like a financial year it becomes like the beginning of a lot and according to the Hebrew calendar the month of month is the month of March is the month of Shabbat and God is about to align us with the children of Israel so as we are aligning with Israel mean that we're entering the church age and as we are entering the church age the church way is going to dominate and we are also about to see God looking towards Israel again so God is about to look towards Israel and as God looked towards Israel and we see the gospel being preached to the remnant in Israel then we know that the rapture is imminent but all of this has to come when the church is taken full power and dominion over the systems of the world so right now God is shifting us to his calendar to the kingdom calendar so we be aligned with his spirit we be aligned with his activities like that now surprisingly according to the Hebrew calendar the year 2020 it is the year of 5780 and now according to Hebrew interpretation of the meaning of the number this number it means the year of of the creation of the world it means the year of the creation of the world so 2020 according to God was the year of the creation of the world so uh, we were beginning to realize the order of creation God was beginning to set the order of how he created the world and when he created the world the church which are his people they had full authority full control and full power over the kingdom of the world because this world for many years thousands of years has now been controlled under the Luciferian circle being controlled by the princes of darkness hence Jesus said 
the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. He said, then I say to you, be wise as serpents, but be harmless as doves. So you need to know that Satan has been in control of the systems of the world for a very long time. But I want to tell you right now, God's time has colluded and God's time has prevailed. The church, it's not the end. It's just the beginning. The beginning for those who know they are God. That's why the World Health Organization and all of them, when they are planning this great reset, so they take over the world. It's not going to happen. They are going to fail. It's a disaster that is going to fail. Whatever vaccine, whatever the COVID-19, it's all going to fail. It's a weapon they used. It's failing. Why is it failing? It's because it's not their time. They cannot stop the time of God. They cannot stop the activities of God. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. It's now time for everybody to know that God is the one who has the final say in the world. Now, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, was given a task to become a precursor. I know some of you don't like him, but I'm telling you as a prophet, he was given a task to become a precursor of what is this transition about. Where God is about to give the wealth of the world back to the church. Because the people of this world have been slaved under this system of financial domination by the kingdom of darkness and these people. I will take you to the book of Isaiah 45. And I want to read to you how the President of the United States has been given, according to this scripture, the authority to work this plan out. Now, according to Isaiah 45, the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to disarm kings, to open doors before him and even city gates will not be shut. I will go before you and level the uneven places. I like it in other places. It says I will make the crooked places straight. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Mark that one. And the riches of secret places. So that you may know that I am the Lord. I am the God of Israel who calls you by your name. I call you by your name for, the na for my servants Jacob's sake and Israel my chosen one. I have given to you though you do not know me. All of us can testify that President, the United States President, they didn't really know God. But God still chose him. And God still anointed him. Now Cyrus was a king chosen by God. And Isaiah prophesied about him 100 years before he was born. That he will be given authority by God to subdue nations and to disarm kings. And this king upon realizing this prophecy began to build a temple of God in Israel. Now, President Trump did something very significant. He changed the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv and recognized that Jerusalem is the capital city of Israel, putting a final stamp in what has been the condition in many decades. Because of this, the President of the United States went to pray in the Golden Heights wall. And he went to pray there. Then when he prayed, after he done all that, the president of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, began to give him a coin of Cyrus, the king, as part of a honor of what he had done for Jerusalem. Now, the president of the United States happens to be the 45th president, which means it's coincidentally 
matching divinely planned by the way matching with Isaiah 45 about Cyrus now one of the reasons that many of you have to understand is that God is doing all this thing because he said in his word that he will never forget Israel he will never forget his covenant with Abraham with Jacob he will never forget it so the president of the United States was used by God to end the conflict in the Middle East and to bring about peace now this is a role that Cyrus played was to establish the Jewish nation exactly like what President Trump has done now I want you to see something again God said here in this scripture I will give you the treasures of darkness riches in secret places I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches in secret places so meaning as the great reset happens which belongs to God not the one of the world we are going to see the scripture being fulfilled where God is going to plunder the riches that has been in the hands of the children of darkness and restore them back to the church so on the next episode of this teaching I will now be bringing to you the practical demonstration of how God is using the president of the United States right now for the fulfillment of this scripture where the wealth that has been in the hands of sinners will soon be transferred to the children of God so there's about to become a financial reset a financial change that will bring the kingdom of God to the next level of their life and that has to do with gold because the nations of the world have been robbed for a very long time by these people but God's time has come and everything will be said so I want to say God bless you continue to subscribe continue to click on the notification and love your family and friends and tell them the best is yet to come this is not the end but I want to pray with somebody right now who say man of God I want to be aligned with the time of God I want to know God's will for my life and I want God to align me with what he is doing and I don't want to be left behind if you say that right now, I want you to stretch your hands and I pray with you right now stretch your hands with me and God is about to touch you his spirit is about to fall upon your life and you will never be the same again Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that as they watch me my father from every nation touch them be touched be filled with the Spirit of God be aligned with the timings of the Spirit be aligned with the calendar of God I align you right now be aligned by the blood of Jesus your eyes are opened your ears your senses are opened in the spirit that you hear touch and to walk on the way the spirit of the sons of Issachar upon you you are becoming a remnant from darkness to light your eyes are opened every mist in your eyes is broken the light of the Lord is shining I thank you Lord in the name of Jesus it is done now family God has already done it for you you have already been changed you have already been taken to the next level of your life believe God because indeed he's the same yesterday today and forever nothing is impossible to him we have overcome for greater is he the one in us than he that is in the world remember Whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. My name is Yamkela Joseph. This is Jesus Reigns TV. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon your life. Until I see you next time. Shalom.
Sita but he's a lot has spoken once again to me. Thank you for watching Jesus Reigns TV. I believe that you are blessed by the testimonies, the teachings, and the prophecies that you keep getting into this channel. Remember, Jesus Reigns is only here to make sure that you at, the, at your home, you are able to receive the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and to know the mind of God in the hour today. As many voices are speaking all over the world, it is very important to hear what the voice of the Lord is saying right now. Maybe you're sitting there at, the, at your home, watching or maybe you're watching through your phone or whatever medium you're using and you said in your heart i've seen the man of god preaching the gospel but i don't know jesus i've never met jesus and i would love to meet that jesus to come into my life right now if you don't know jesus christ i want to lead you to a prayer of salvation and the lord jesus will come to your heart and he will save you your sins will be forgiven and your life will be changed so make this prayer with me right now say lord jesus come unto my heart and change my life. I believe that you died and you resurrected. And today, because of your blood, I am saved. With my heart, I believe. With my mouth, I confess that you are the Lord over my life and the King of my salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me in Jesus' name. Immediately, you have made this prayer. Now you are born again. Now you are a child of the kingdom of God. The Bible says we believe with our hearts, we confess with our mouth, and we are saved. Immediately, you have done this prayer. You have taken the best decision over your life. And right now, I want you to read the Bible and live by the word of the Lord. Because the Bible is clear that He gave all of us to become the sons of God. And now, you are the son of God. May the Lord bless you. Continue to watch Jesus on TV. Continue to click on the notification. Until I see you next time. Shalom. Shalom.